You are still watching the program if you just joined us. It's the midweek frenzy edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And yes, it's time for us to take a look at the headlines on some of the national newspapers in the country. And we are beginning with leadership newspaper. And leadership leads with ahead of inauguration, rents, property value search in Abuja. And the writer there, estate developers, landlords, agents make risks business. They make risk business as a result of the inauguration. New lawmakers, political appointees scramble for accommodation, cost of building materials, inflation blamed. That's the leading headline on the leadership newspaper. You go on top of that leading headline, you have a sub-headline that says, Agora policy tax president-elect on prudence fiscal responsibility. Agora is a private sector policy think tank, uh, and uh, they have said that the president, the incoming president, you know, should be prudent as he takes over the mantle of leadership. And you go on top of the leadership newspaper, you have PMB reappoints Abike Dabri Erewa as NATCOM chairman. And the second over there on the top of the leadership is Adamawa Reg in police custody. And he says, I didn't collect bribe. Details of that is on page 15 of leadership newspaper. I think that's it for leadership newspapers. No, that's not it. You still have on the side something very serious that has to do with our sector. Editors seek press freedom, safety for journalists. Uh, page six is where you find details of that. Editors seeking press freedom, safety for journalists. You have Equeramadu, reps, ECOWAS, right UK government, plead for clemency. You do remember that uh, Olga Hav uh, organ harvesting story. And then Nguike declares public holiday as Tinubu visits rivers. Mm, that's on page eight. We'll move away from okay, the yeah. leadership now. We'll, we'll, we'll go to Nature News. And Nature News has very interesting stories as well. Concerns as charcoal business takes toll on uh, Nigeria's forests, mangroves, State governments, agencies move to curb tide. Uh, traders blame environmental pollution, others for engaging in trade. That is on page three of Nature News. We also have um, a, a story, but I will say hopeful <laughs> story. <laughs> so, Olu to Lagosians, expect cleaner, greener public transport system. We can't wait. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria's gas uh, reserves now eighth in global ranking. That's according to a report that came in. And then we have uh, something sporty. On the 17th, Afcon Lawali dedicates award to teammates on page 21. The boys are doing us proud. Uh, that'll be it from uh, Nature News. And from the Nature News, we move to the Nation newspaper. And the Nation newspaper is leading with Adamawa, please squeeze, detain, wreck, INEC commissioners. Uh, you have the writers there. Yunusa Ari gives self up at force headquarters, says, I have no regrets. He is still very bold. And on the side of that, you have first batch of Nigerians expected from Sudan today. 1,350 arrive in Port Sudan. 5,500 taken out of Khartoum and House leadership meets ministerial agencies. So we're still on that figure, 5,500. Okay. So on top of the nation newspaper's headline, you have 57.4 million BVNs linked to bank accounts. 7,500 under watch list. Is your name on that, that list? <laughs> watch list? All right, so Obi admits making phone calls to Oyedipo, and that's on page five, my UK airport experience. Obi admits making phone calls to Oyedipo, and then right up there, my UK airport experience. And so you have beside that, NSIA launches firm to 
deliver healthcare expansion plan that will be found on page six and then zenith bank shareholders get 100.47 naira dividend you find that on page 11 and right at the bottom of the nation newspaper you find jam releases UTME result. You also have driver who slammed bus into train in Lagos Remanded. That's it for the Nation newspaper. Okay, we move to the Guardian, and the top story there is negotiations, intense lobbying among contenders as National Working Committee meets. That's page uh, six. That's talking about Senate presidency. That's what is giving the uh, making them negotiate and lobby. We have another story. CBN places 7,552 account holders on BVN watch list. Uh, well, my name cannot be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Tinubu's $10.8 million London mansion. Buying property under investigation risky, lawyers say. Uh, that will be found on page two. Uh, Federal um, Airport Authority of Nigeria to demolish more illegal houses around airports nationwide. That is news uh, on page 5 of The Guardian. Sudan crisis. Lawmakers summon Onyema, Daviri, Nema officials. We'll see that on page 3. And then we have Fintry Hills arrest of fleeing Adamawa wreck two weeks after. And finally, Crisis rocks Abia Assembly as members impeach Speaker. And we touched that a little bit yesterday. So, okay. So, those were the headlines on uh, the Guardian newspaper today. Yes, and, and we have a guest to join us on Off the Press to take a look at some of these headlines in the person of Tunde Kolawole. He is a legal practitioner here in Lagos. Good morning, Tunde. Good morning, my sister. How are you today? Thanks for having me. I'm good. It's, good. it's always a pleasure to have you. Let's go straight to the Nation newspaper, which leads with Adamawa. Uh, Adamawa, please squeeze, detain, wreck, INEC commissioners. L l let's start with that. What's your take on the fact that uh, he has finally uh, been caught or oh, he's in the police custody being creased? Well, they've been. Two conflicting stories about um, his arrest, we've had in some quarters that the man willingly uh, submitted himself to the police. On the other hand, um, the police are telling us that uh, they tracked him and then were able to arrest him. Whichever is the case, there is immaterial at this period in time. What is important is that the man who should be police. And he has to tell the police uh, everything that he knows and what role he played in the deeper coup that was the Adamawa governorship uh, uh, election. Uh, without making too much information, one could say that uh, what happened, declaring the result when it has not been completed under our law, is a very, very serious uh, infraction. In fact, it is not too far away from uh, prison. And then I do know that um, prison carries uh, very onerous uh, consequences under our law. Because what the man did is capable of uh, truncating uh, this democracy, which we have been naturally very carefully since 1999. Uh, we will also not try and prejudice whatever the police might be looking at. Let us just say for now, he is in police net, and we are told some other persons have also been invited. Let us hope that the police will do a thorough job and arrive at a, a bend that will make it either possible to prosecute the man in the court of competent jurisdiction, and if he has no case to answer, to let him be. If there are some other accomplices too, then we expect that the police will strike their drag neck and then bring in all those uh, people 
who might be copied, who might have aided and updated, who might have uh, compiled with this work to do what um, you did. Because when you look at the ramifications of uh, what happened, you want to believe that it will be difficult for just one man to begin to do or to embark on the course of action which the wreck had uh, embarked upon. As he gave him, he has given himself up or has been arrested, whichever it is, uh, he's saying that he has no regrets. How, how do you respond to that coming that from a man wrong. who's been in hiding, <laughs> finally coming out, either being arrested or giving himself up? He's confident that he has no regret over his actions. Well, uh, you know that uh, from the little that I read from the statement that he had made, he has said that uh, he didn't collect bribe from anybody to do what he did. He is also claiming that he has the responsibility to do what he has done. But when you look at the electoral act and, uh, and all that, you will agree with me that uh, the wreck is the overall head of uh, the INEC office in Adawa State. And that not really, uh, he has a final responsibility with regards to what happened. This idea of bringing people from outside INEC, university professors and all that, to come and do political and many results and all that, was well, something that uh, the former INEC chairman uh, Jega, Professor Jega, introduced into uh, this electoral process to give it some uh, uh, credibility. I wouldn't know whether that has been incorporated into the regulations and guidelines which I make is usually draft and give uh, to all their functionaries during the election. What regulations and uh, uh, other things are in kind of a supplementary to the Electoral Act. The Electoral Act is the main Other regulations that I make about is supplementary to that, uh, to the Electoral Act. And it is the supplementary thing, uh, regulation that I make usually do, is also recognized uh, by law. But one takes precedence over the other. First is the Constitution. Second is the Electoral Act and the INA guidelines and precedent uh, the other ones that uh, could be read into the Electoral Act. I suspect that this work is relying on the Constitution and also relying on the Electoral Act to assert or to make uh, the claim that he is making that he acted within the purview of his, uh, of his office. The court, if this matter eventually goes to court, will help us to interpret that and give their decision with regards to whether the man is within the purview of the office or he has gone on a full leak of his own. Well, um, I'm just wondering uh, how different is this uh, case of Adamawa from what happened at the national scene? Because a lot of people who are talking against the Adamawa wreck is that he overstepped, he, sh he did what he shouldn't have done, which means they feel that the provisions in whether the Electoral Act or the Constitution did not give him that power to announce the result, especially when the coalition had not finished. And if they are going to take this case to the court, what document are they going to use to judge the case? Because that same document, which we are hoping they are going to use to judge the case, also said transmission of results from the polling units should be done from the BVAS to the IREV and all that. And it was jettisoned for whatever reason that they are giving to us. So if they prosecute him, what now happens at the national scene? What is the difference that gives this one uh, a, a bad name and the other one a good name? What? Uh not like you said, the law is the prophecy of what the court will say, and nothing more pretentious. Like I said, 
The constitution is the organic uh, law. That is the gun norm. The most uh, important of all the laws. And then followed by the Electoral Act. And of course, the INEC rules and regulation uh, comes into in that. Uh, the bypass that we talked about, I'm not too sure that the bypass is I mean, uh, incorporated uh, per se into the Electoral uh, Act. It only says that uh, elections can be transmitted electronically. And you are now to know that electoral transmission of the results is not necessary to buy back the law. And uh, even when the law has made provisions for that, like the INEC chairman in Abuja during the presidential election has seen that and all that, there could be a first major. A first major in the sense that uh, if there are issues with the technology, like a uh, lack of internet, that we sometimes experience even when we go to our bank to do transactions and the bank to say there are no internet service or that their servers are down. You have to wait and come back the following day or thereabouts. That is a force my job. I suspect that what the INEC in Abuja are relying on is that uh, there was a force my job which made it impossible for them to transmit the results to the papers and then the electoral uh, any other electronic means. For the Adamawa issue, uh, there wasn't any issue, or well, I'm not aware that it was any issue, the transmission of the results uh, uh, through the Bible to any electronic means. I think what happened at the election court was uh, considered inconclusive in certain places and what I do. And rather than wait that all these things be properly tallied and what I do. The former REC uh, went here to declare um, the result. But whichever way we look at it, I make as a body at the federal level who still did the one to be blamed for not just what happened during the presidential election, but also what we saw in Adama during the governorship election. Too many times we send it the House of Red and Nigerians do the pressure and all that. As the INA people in Abuja, the readiness to transmit the results through Bibles and other electronic means. And then we were assured that they were prepared. In fact, before the electoral act was passed, part of the reason that the Senate, for example, didn't want to incorporate electronic uh, transmission of results and electronic voting into the electoral act was that they feared that in certain parts of the country, at certain times, it might be difficult to submit results, either through virus or to upload this into the server, and the server in Abuja, because of the peculiarity of our situation. Lack of electricity in certain places, lack of internet, I mean, adequate internet coverage in some others, and even the manpower. I'll give you an example. For my neck officials, you have said, uh, serving the responsibility or transmitting some of the results to the driver. He didn't actually know how to operate that machine, you know? So if the man doesn't know how to operate a machine and all that, if he had not been given adequate training for not to operate it, and if he had been given training, and he's not smart enough to know how to use those things, because he is a technological, he doesn't have the technological target. Some of these things are really difficult to insist that they should be done when there's a false matter uh, like that. But for whom much is given, much is also expected. Yeah. I make a four years to prepare for that election, whether the government of the presidential. They have also been given adequate resources in terms of men, in terms of manpower. Almost everything that they requested for were made available to them. So to whom much is given, much is also expected. Exactly. All the excuses and nafis that we saw with that election ought not to have arisen. In fact, when you are using technology, we are supposed to have some backup in there so that when one fails to, you quickly switch over to the second one so that you not be disappointed with what you want to do. Okay. So, we will wait and let the court uh, decide 
the face of both uh, Rex and also whatever comment he might be making uh, with regard to the performance of the uh, uh, in okay. the conduct of uh, the election. Okay, so it just it just shows INEC was not a hundred percent prepared because if the people no, who, no. who were supposed to know that couldn't uh, operate the machines. But let's move on from um, uh, right. election matters to uh, another very uh, interesting one. First batch of Nigerians expected from Sudan today. Uh, so, so many days after today. Uh, 1,350 arrived in Port Sudan and 5,500 taken out of uh, Khartoum House Leadership Meets Ministries Agencies. So we are expecting the first batch of uh, our evacuees from Sudan only today in Nigeria. What are your comments on that? Well, for me, it's uh, good that uh, the first batch are coming in. But honestly speaking, like most of us, I think we've been too rather happy in the evacuation of the uh, Nigerian citizens in Sudan. Look at the swift manner in which uh, the American government, the British government, the German government, the Japanese government quickly evacuated their citizens and all that. Whereas we are in Africa and we have a better advantage with regard to the evacuation of our people. There has been a late long historical uh, relationship between Sudan and Nigeria. In the past, when there were no flights and war ago, people used to take from Nigeria to Sudan and then to make her to, to participate in the arch, in lesser arch and then the main arch and all that. So, furthermore, Nigeria has one of the biggest embassies in the Sudan. So at the time, the Penny of Northern Nigeria used to have some of his holidays uh, in the Sudan. You also know that Sudan uh, has uh, one of the OEA sites uh, that most went to pass within its uh, soil. And if you also look at the number of Nigerian students who are set to be school in Sudan, about 10,000 of them, this will tell you uh, the historical relationship between Nigeria and uh, Sudan. So one would have expected that uh, the federal government who have a better communication, who have a better rapport with the Sudanese authority, so that within 48 hours, like these other countries are able to do, we will be able to evacuate uh, our citizens. But rather, we hired their bosses and then took them to uh, uh, Egypt. Here, yeah, Egypt again delayed the people, didn't allow them to come on because they were said to not to have a visa. That didn't happen to citizens of other countries and other. The people, I mean, refugees, refugee, people were running away from war, are not expected to have a visa. It just tells you the contempt, the disregard, the apprehension, the hostility that we as Nigeria have always get from people and from countries that we have been always, that we have always been uh, highly and well uh, disposed at so I suspect that the Egyptian people also don't trust our citizens. They think that if they easily come in there, they might not leave. And if they don't leave, they may begin to create malfeasance and engage in uh, criminality okay, well, in the their country. The, the they wouldn't of... want it to happen. Yes, uh, Tunde, the fallout of yeah. the way uh, our officials handle the evacuation of our people from Sudan has led to uh, lawmakers summoning Onyema, that's uh, yeah. the Foreign Affairs Minister and uh, Honorable Abike Dabere Rewa, uh, Nima officials to come and explain to them. Explain but that's on the one hand, because we also have part of the headlines where President Muhammad Buhari has reappointed Honorable Abike Dabri as NIDCOM chairman. Can you comment on this as you blend them together? Well, uh, by and large, I think uh, that Abike Dabri has, uh, in a way, uh, not done too badly as chairman of the agency that he has. At least so far, we haven't uh, had uh, 
any serious scandal uh, with regards to the activities of uh, uh, that uh, agency. My suspicion is that uh, there wasn't uh, a synergy between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also the agency that appreciated that we handle. Most times, rather than work as a team, these agencies begin to rival themselves, they begin to contest among themselves. Not just as the guys are going to get the job done, but also is going to take the credit at the end of the day. And when two elephants are fighting, it is usually the guys that suffer. Most times the Nigerian people that suffer, when different agencies of government begin to rival themselves as regards uh, what is to be done and they need to do it in a very, very sweet uh, manner. But if I were President Muhammad Uwari, I wouldn't have appointed the uh, Abiketabri. Why do I say that? Some of the appointments that the President is making today, in a way, will tie them behind the incoming uh, President. Because the appointment of Abiketabri is going to be for another 10 of uh, uh, four years. That is to say, if the incoming President and incoming government are not even pleased, if they review our work and they are not pleased with our services and all that, they cannot remove us, they cannot do anything about that. If they dare to do, they might be falling into the same trap which they fell into with the chairman of NNPC, Ararume, who has gone to court now and the court has said he should be paid billions of naira for the shoddy manner in which he was removed as the chairman of the NNPC. In just a few days to go, the president should have waited for the incoming government to begin to make some of these appointments and all that, so that the hands of the incoming government will not be tied and there will be no liability on that government for staffers and for agencies that they might not uh, be too comfortable with. Okay, well, thank you, Tinde. Let's move from that to the Guardian newspaper. And a very yeah. interesting story there about the crisis rocking the Abia State House of Assembly as members impeach Speaker. Well, the most of the Assembly in Nigeria uh, has uh, not lived up to the Nigerian uh, people's expectations. Most of them have uh, become a rubber stamp for the governors at the state level and then at the federal level they become a rubber stamp for the president. Take the Senate for example now. Those wanting to become Senate president and wanting to become Senate deputy Senate president and other principal officers are now going to the incoming um, a president to lobby him to be appointed or to step into those issues. So if he was the one that the lobby and he made it possible for them to become Senate President and the Speakers of House of Representatives, how would they be able to assert their independence when eventually the government uh, take off? The same thing for the state, the governor the state who becomes the speaker and who doesn't hold any and who doesn't hold any principal offices in the respective state of assembly. We collect that in uh, Ekiti State, not too long ago, the present governor in Ekiti State had his own candidate for the speakership. And then the outgoing governor, Kayo Depayemi, also wanted his own loyalist uh, to occupy the, the post of the speaker of the Ekiti State Assembly. When the incumbent governor went and uh, uh, appointed and then got his uh, man sworn in, that was the fire me sworn into action, and I think the speaker was removed. And that was the fire me candidate was eventually made the speaker of the clear assembly. If you look at what is happening in the state that we are talking about also, two issues may be responsible. It could be that the governor of that state is no longer comfortable with the, the speaker of the House of Assembly, or the members of the House of Assembly are not comfortable with the performance of the speaker. To the extent that some of the things they expected, they will be getting in terms of uh, provisions, in terms of the money, in terms of other uh, packages of office, 
If they think they are not getting it and not that, the tendency is what they will usually do is to remove the speaker to pave the way for somebody else who might be willing uh, to dance to their own and get them whatever they would uh, have they wanted. But I suspect that it is not impossible that the governor will have a hand in this. And if he doesn't have, if the House of Assembly decides to assert his set, and the governor feels that it's going to be his detriment, the possibility is that the governor will still go ahead in the future and remove the speaker and impose his own candidate. Recall it also what happened in the dossier that uh, the other assembly, in order that the governor may not have a rival competitor of people who query him and know that, the uh, total assembly was shut down for years. And the governor we were able to that uh, went ahead and remove the roof of the adult state out of assembly, such that the lawmaker had no place to sit and hold meeting. I'm not too sure that they still have that, uh, or whether that uh, building has uh, been reduced. So these are some of the issues that we've been contending with since they return to this uh, republic in 1999. We just pray that the legislators will know that there ought to be separation of power between the executive, the legislator, and then uh, the judiciary. And also to use journalists who are considered to be the first exit of the area. There also to be some separation of power between you two and these other organs of the state that I have mentioned. Right. Okay. Oh. Uh, that will be the much we can take uh, exactly. today on the on this segment of the show today. I would like to say thank you to you for coming on the show and giving insight to some of the headlines. Thank you, Tinde. We'll be taking a break now to come thank back. Thank you for having me. Do yeah. have a lovely day. Yes. So we'll be taking a look at. Uh, the cost of insurgency and banditry in Nigeria. You want to stay with us as we take a look at the impact of banditry in this country. We have a very interesting guest that you want to listen to. Stay with us as we take this break and return on The Breakfast. <music>